Hello guys, welcome to A Train Pirate. In this video, I'm going to do an overview about this theory that is pointing towards Bitcoin topping for the cycle at 73K. The video comes from a channel called Crypto Crew University. I do really respect what comes out from this channel. Steve clarifies that he doesn't believe that 73 is going to be the top of the market. In this video, we're going to review the theory. It's fascinating how Bitcoin reacts to the stochastic RSI on the two weekly time frame. And I'm going to give you my own cut of what I think should happen. Stick around if you want to know if I do believe in this theory or if I don't and what are my arguments. Guys, if you like this type of content, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Hit the notification bell to get notified every time I put out one of these videos. In the last month, we have doubled the views, but many of you are new in the channel and haven't subscribed yet. I will be more than pleased if you decide to subscribe, hit the like and do not go anywhere without leaving a comment down below. That is keeping me motivated. If you are interested in watching the original video to learn from the source, what was the perspective in regards to why Bitcoin could be topping at 73K. I encourage you to go to the channel Crypto Crew University and search for this video that came out a couple of days ago, warning Bitcoin about to do something that caused a huge crash last time. Can it be avoided? Let's review very quickly what Steve has been monitoring in regards to the stochastic RSI. The stochastic RSI is using just the default parameters and it looks like this. It's an indicator of momentum. If you've been following my channel, you know that I focus mostly on the RSI. This is a stochastic RSI, so slightly different. Steve is an outstanding observer of charts, especially when it comes to higher time frames. He can really cherry pick the best patterns and make great decisions based on what he sees. Let's focus on this cycle here from the top of 2011 to the top of the next cycle on 2013. What do we see in between the, these two levels? So we have from here to the top around there. And if you focus below here on the stochastic, what's going on, you can see that you have here a bullish cross that, that signals when the bull market is about to start. And then you have another bullish cross around here that gives you the final run into the blow of top. In this area here, you see an area of overbought and also you see an area of overbought here. So I want you to think that the pattern on the stochastic RSI is pretty much going up with the, after a bullish cross, stick around at the top, then come back down and then go for the blow of top and then back down. On this move and last move in here is where you enter the bear market. So around here is confirmed the bear market. That is for the first cycle. Let's go to the three next cycles to observe the small differences that we can appreciate. Let's recognize that this is the area of the beginning of the bull market. Then we go up and we are allowed to do anything around here apart from crossing below 20, which we do later in here. And then we go up, we remain above and we come down here to confirm the beginning of the bear market again. So let's put a vertical line there and you see that the pattern remains the same going up, down, up, down and end of the bull market. Let's go to the next cycle and we have beginning of the bull market, one cross here, the top there and then another move here and then here confirm the bear market. According to the technicals, this was the top of 2021st, but we have a higher high here, even though it came from a dead cut bounce. And why is that? That's because the COVID took away all this move to the downside. So in theory, the bull market should have continued here if we didn't have COVID and then come back below. And then this will be the dead cut bounce. By doing that, it will have matched all the previous bull markets. After we took away all these gains from the top, we ended up having a blow of top that was lower than the dead cut bounce. That is the biggest anomaly of the third cycle. Let's go to the current cycle. Let's put the line in here and let's try to find the bullish cross that we have had. And this is the first bull cross that tells us when this bull market starts. And that happened at a price of 20K, not necessarily at 17, okay? That is fine. Then we have our first area of topping and here we have an anomaly. So this is something that I do not hear Steve talking about because even though 
we are having a bullish cross here, just like we did here and here and there. This one is a bullish cross that happens technically above 20. Yes, the blue line goes below, but the orange doesn't. So this is kind of a gray area, in my opinion, and it could be considered similar to this and this, which doesn't make it below 20. But if you are thinking that this constitutes the first time that we go below 20, then that will be really bad news for all the bulls because that will mean that this is our second overbought area and we are pointing down and if we get below here, we will get the second. And that has been historically based on past performance and of a bull market. And that's why I find extremely attractive to be looking at these patterns, absolutely inspired by what Steve was showing in his own channel. Of course, credits to him. My own opinion, I think that this is not a cross below 20. I will treat this pattern as if it was still part of the oversold for the first move up. Steve decides to still take this as the first oversold area and this the second overbought. But the theory of Steve is that potentially during this candle of two weeks that has four days left to close, that we might have a bullish crossover from here to remain at these high levels for longer, meaning that we are going to enter the second oversold slightly later. I'm talking about late 2024 or somewhere in 2025. So basically the main decision is to consider this a whole thing and then this coming back down here and doing the second overbought there for a final sell there. That's option one or option two is that this is the first and this is the second and the second should expand for longer, assuming that this is a valid bullish crossover. So whether you resonate more with what Steve is saying or what I'm saying, you have to consider that we are both biased towards that there should be another push higher and we should get at some point a new all-time high within this cycle, meaning in the next one year. I have plenty of other indicators that are pointing towards getting a new all-time high at some point in the next year. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. In later videos, I will be showing you an update on all those other indicators. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments which theory you have in particular. Maybe you are from the team thinking that 73 is the end of the bull market. I'm interested to know why you think that. It's always good to have different perspectives. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.